Hey guys, quick heads up before I start the video, the link down below takes you to my Patreon where you can download the project files for this video. Also gain access to my premium tutorials and in-depth courses where we build games together from start to finish. Check out my Patreon below, gain direct access to years of experience so that you can start working on your dream game tomorrow. Hello guys and welcome back to part 5 of my Bean multiplayer Bean Battle Royale tutorial series. So in today's video, we are going to continue with the logic from yesterday. So yesterday we have been setting up more of the session logic, uh, actually setting it up in the main menu so that we can get two players to connect to one another. So if we hit play here, we can click on create game, click how many uh, people we want in the session, let's say eight, hit create, and then we would have the session. And then we can test here if we are inside of the main menu level with two standalone clients. Then we got two of these windows. I'm going to make this one a tiny bit smaller as such. And this one could be a bit bigger. So then we can have one guy actually hosting a session here with nine people uh, and he hit create. He is then entered into the session. And then on the left here, this would then be the client, but right now it's just standalone. So for it to become the client, it would click on find game, refresh, and then if we wait a little while, then we see our session popping up here with one to nine players. And the nine is what I typed in myself. Uh, our ping is six, and then we can join the session. And then we enter into the multiplayer session where we can see each other, jump around and replication works and does its thing. So in this video, we're going to continue on this because what we also need to handle when working with multiplayer and traveling. So going from one level to another, so the main menu into battle level in this case, then what you also need to do is that you need to uh, basically handle your errors and you need to destroy your session. So what do we mean with handling the errors? Well, in case of connecting to a multiplayer session, it can of course occur that somebody's internet is failing or other things that the computer might crash in total. And then we do need to handle the player actually disconnecting from the match properly uh, and then also destroying the session that lives. So once more, what we need to handle in this video is basically those errors that can occur during level traveling and other networking things and properly destroying the session. So when the players are in the battle royale level, they also at some point want to go leave that session or the session might end itself and then the players all need to go back to the main menu where they are disconnected from the session and where they are then supposed to be able to host another session again. So for that we are going to make a new folder inside of our blueprints folder and we're going to call this folder the game instance. And the game instance is a blueprint that exists inside of Unreal Engine, which you could consider the king of all blueprints. So to give you guys a little bit of information about what we're about to do here, the blueprint that we will be making in this folder is a blueprint unlike other blueprints, which exists whenever the game starts up and then it stays in existence all the way until you quit your game. So unlike the classes that we see over here, such as your game mode, your character class, your player controller, your heads up display, game state, player state, all of these classes, they get destroyed when traveling from one level to another. So we have these classes in the main menu, and then we have these classes as well inside of our gameplay level. Uh, but when traveling from this gameplay level to let's say another map, then all of those classes would get destroyed. But in case that we need to still maintain some data that existed inside of these classes, so let's say you store some data about your character inside of your player state, right? Then when traveling from one level to the other, that data will get lost. But if you do want to keep track of that data, then the game instance, we call it the king of all blueprints here. And uh, basically that one will persist and will maintain. So there is a perfect place to code things that you want to be reliable and things that you want to want to always be able to access in, in short. So that is what we're going to be setting up right now. And where do we install the game instance? Well, first of all, we are going to have to create this class. So we're going to right click in this folder. Then we're going to go up to blueprint class and then open up all classes. And in here, we're going to type in game instance. 
And then this is where you will see it occur. So as it says here also, game instance, high level manager object for an instance of the running game. Spawned at the creation and not destroyed until game instance is shut down. And that is the reason why we're using this. It's gonna be very useful in just a little bit. So if we click then on select, it will then create a class for us. We're gonna call it BP underscore GI, which stands for game instance. And that's it. So now that we made it, we have to assign it to our game. And unlike being able to assign multiple game modes in your game and stuff like that, one game project can only have one game instance. So this is a single class for your entire project to use. So if we go up here to edit project settings, then under maps and modes here, we see a little tab called game instance, game instance class. And by default is set to the default game instance. And then we are going to assign it to our game instance. Now that we set that up, we can then basically open up the game instance and see what we can code here. And there are a couple of things inside of this game instance that are unique to it, which we cannot code in other classes, but we can code here. And those functions can be found over here. So here's the four overridable functions. And if you open that, then this is where you see them. So the first function that we see is init. And what it says is opportunity for blueprints to handle the game instance being initialized. So basically what this event does is this is the first begin play, the first hello world event that your game fires. Then the next event that we see is the shutdown event. Now, this is the opposite of the event init. So this is the event where we see uh, opportunity for blueprints to handle the game instance being shut down. And with game instance, they basically mean your game. So this is where the game actually quits and then you can code from final stuff here. So what is this useful for? Well, here you can initialize a bunch of save game data when initializing the game. And when shutting down, you can make sure that you do a final save for your game. So if, if it is shutting down incorrectly because of some type of error, if you have the event shut down here, you can still have some safeguard logic here to, to save the game basically. And then we see two other functions, which we're gonna be using for this video, which is the network error. And then if we click again, we also see the travel error. So what is the network error? Well, this uh, we, can, we can see what type of network errors there are off of the failure type. So if we drag off of here, we can type in switch on network failure. And this gives us all of the available network errors that can occur. So it are a bunch of errors and we're not gonna be connecting the separate cables here. What we're gonna do is that in case of network error, we're simply going to print string it for now, and then we're gonna basically be dragging in this variable into the print string so that we can simply get it on our screen and see what that failure type is. Now this print string, we're gonna make it red, and we're also gonna say that the duration of this error will be five seconds so that we can actually properly read it. But let's make it actually 10, there we go. And then the travel error here is an opportunity for blueprints to handle travel errors. So what is traveling? Well, traveling, as I explained before, is when you go from one level to another. So when you are on one map of your shooter game, you go to another map, that's when traveling occurs. During travel, a lot can go wrong. So people might disconnect, for example, or they can't load the map or anything crazy like that would, ba would basically get notified to us by this travel error here. And yet again here, we can drag off here and type in switch to see all of the possible failure types. So we see no level, load map failure, invalid URL, which means we're trying to travel to a map that, that doesn't exist, so a wrong reference basically, and all kinds of other errors. For this one, we're basically gonna do the same. So we're gonna drag off of here, type in print string, and then we're gonna drag in the failure type here, because we just wanna get a notification of it. And then we're gonna make this red as well and also make it last 10 seconds. Okay, so that's it for these events that we need over here. For now, we're not gonna be using the init and the shutdown. So we're gonna remove them for now. And we're gonna put a comment around this and let's call it handle network and travel errors. So there we go. Typically what you would code is that in the case that you have a network error or travel error, instead of doing a print string, you would basically present the players with something like a pop-up. Then inside of the pop-up, you could then display that failure type. It's nicer than doing it with a print string, but that would require us setting up a whole pop-up widget. And for the purpose of this video and also this tutorial series, which is focused on multiplayer, I won't be doing that right now, maybe later on in the series, but we're gonna keep it at this for now. Uh, 
And then another thing to note about these network and travel errors is how does it work? So let's say I am inside of the battle royale and somehow my internet disconnects, or let's say I'm in this level and traveling to another level, but then we are gonna get a traveling error. What actually happens in that case? Well, what Unreal Engine does by default is that it will then send you back to the most default level that you have set up. So if we take a look here inside of edit, project settings, head over to maps and modes, then we see that the game default map is set to the boot screen level. So whenever an error actually occurs while in the game or while traveling, so going from main menu to some kind of level, then we basically get sent back in this case to our boot screen level, where yet again, the game will act like it's starting up all fresh. And then from there, it will send us to the main menu. And then we can basically continue from there. So that's one important thing to note. Then as we saw in the last video, we set up the events for creating sessions, finding sessions and joining sessions, but we did not handle the destroying of the sessions. And that's what we're gonna be doing right now. So when the players are inside of this battle royale map right here, they need to have the ability to click leave session. So first of all, we're gonna add some, uh, a little bit of UI basically, a game menu that the players get when they press escape, where they then get a, uh, get a panel with options. And one of those options will be leave session. So first of all, let's go ahead and set up that widget real quick. So for that, we're going to make a new folder and we're going to call it game widgets. And that's what I'm referring to as our heads up display kind of. And then inside of here, we're going to make a little widget and let's call it game menu. So this will be the menu for when you press escape. Then we go ahead and open this up and drag ourselves a little canvas panel. Uh, and it's not gonna look beautiful for now, but we are just gonna keep it simple. So we're gonna drag in a border. This border, we're gonna give it a color, let's say something dark gray like this, beautiful. And then we're gonna size it to the content and we're gonna anchor it to the middle. So hold shift, click in the middle, hold control, click in the middle here. And then it's a, it's a very small panel right now because it does not have any content. The content that we're gonna put in it is the vertical box. And then an item inside of the vertical box here will be some text. This text is going to be saying, this text is going to be saying game menu. Uh, then we see that we want to give the vertical box some padding. So we're going to give it some all round padding of let's say 15 or 25, something like that. Underneath the game menu, we're going to be adding some buttons. We're gonna be using our self-made base button as we saw before. This base button, let's go ahead and wrap it with a size box and then we're gonna assign a height to it. So we're gonna say height and let's do something like 40. Um, then we're gonna select the game menu text here, give it some padding to the bottom, let's say 25. And the button itself, we're gonna make it say continue. So this is our continue button. So we're also gonna double click it and make it say continue underscore button. Next up, we're gonna duplicate this size box. And then the next button here, we're gonna rename it to say leave game underscore button. And then we're gonna duplicate the size box once more and make this one say quit game underscore button. Then we're gonna click the middle button here, which is the leave game button. And we're gonna make it say leave session. And then the bottom button, we're gonna make it say quit game. There we go. We wanna select these size boxes and give them some padding. So let's do something like 15 in between. There we go. Next up, we need to code the widget quickly. So we're gonna click on the continue button, go down to the on clicked event get that into the graph. We're gonna do the same for the leave game button and the quit game button. So we're gonna go down, click there. We can also simply click on the quit game button here and then get its event into the graph this way. So there we go. We're then gonna hit compile and save. And next up, we need to make it so that this widget will actually uh, get into our player screen whenever we press escape. So first we're gonna make a little input here inside of the editor. So we're gonna go up to edit and then go to project settings, go to inputs and we need another action input. So this one, we're going to call it game menu. 
And uh, instead of assigning it to escape, because escape right now actually uh, quits our simulation here. So if we click escape, it just quits that. So for testing purposes, I'm going to be assigning it to T for now. And that's fine. So let's call it instead of game menu, let's call it toggle game menu. Next up, we go ahead and head over to our game modes, core game mode, and then our core player controller. This one, we're going to make it full screen. And here we're going to get our event. So we're going to type in toggle game menu to get our input. And then here we need to make the code to actually create and toggle that game menu. So to do that, we're going to drag off here and type in create widget. Now the widget that we want to create is going to be our game menu widget, this one. The owning player is going to be ourself as the player controller. We're going to save a reference to this widget as we want to communicate to it in the near future. So we're going to type in wb underscore game menu. Next up, we're going to have to add it to the viewport. And there we go. Now, obviously, each time that we're going to press it, it's going to be creating a widget and adding it to the viewport. So to fix that logic, we're going to disconnect this and drag it down. To disconnect, hold Alt and click on the wire. We're going to then drag in the variable that we made here. We're going to right click it and convert it to a validated get. What this means is if the variable has not been set, so by default, if I hit compile here, we see that there's no reference in here, so it's not properly set. But by creating the widget and putting this return value into the variable, it will actually get set. So uh, then we can validate variables. So if we drag variables in, we can type in is valid and get this one with the question mark. And what this macro does is that it basically checks whether or not this variable is set to none like this, which means not valid, or whether or not the variables actually filled in with a reference such as this one from the WB game menu. And in that case, it would say is valid. Now, a mo more modern way to do this is not to use that is valid macro, but nothing wrong with it, but is to basically right click on variables. And then here you can say convert to validated get, which does the same. So in the case that the variable is not valid, we're going to be saying that we want to create it. And then in that case, we also want to basically add it to the viewport. Now, uh, in the case that we, we press it again, and it turns out that the variable is valid, in that case, we're going to basically have to toggle it. So we're going to have to toggle the visibility. So if we drag this down a little bit and get the reference to the widget here into the viewport, then we're going to go off of it and type in is visible. We then get this is visible function. We're then going to hold B and left click, click to do a branch. Plug this into here. So in the case that it is visible, then we're basically going to say we want to set it to be invisible. So uh, say set visibility. So when it is visible, we want to hide it. So we're going to set the visibility to collapsed. And then in the case that it is not visible, so is visible false. In that case, we want to set its visibility to visible and then plug in the reference here. So now we can go ahead and test out this logic for, so basically what this logic does is the first time that we click on toggle game menu, it will then create the widget for us in case it's not valid. After it has been validated, then we're simply going to check, is it in the screen? If it is, hide it. If it is not, make it visible. And that's how we have proper toggle logic. So now we're going to click on play and then we get our little bean here. We're then going to click T. We will see the menu in our screen. Click T again to hide it. Click T again to make it visible. Click T again to hide it. And there we go. So that works. Now what we do see is that we don't have a mouse whenever we do that. So we also need to set up the logic to actually set our mouse to be visible and invisible. So right off of here, whenever we make the widget visible, we're going to drag here and set set mouse cursor and then over here, we see a variable called set show mouse cursor. So this one will be to true. In this case, when we collapse it, it will be false. Now also we want to handle uh, focusing the widget. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag the widget. In the case that the widget becomes visible, we want to set input mode to game and UI. So here we're going to plug this one in. 
And this is the widget that we want to focus in that case. Now the player controller is ourself. So as we are the player controller right now in this class, that will simply be ourself. And then in the case that we hide the widget, then we're going to get the widget once more. And then we're going to drag off of here and type in set input mode. But this time we're going to set it to the game only. Now here we do not need a reference of this widget, but we simply need another reference of the player controller. So that one goes in here. So let's go ahead and test that out. We're in the game here. We press T. We get our little panel, but we don't see our mouse. So what's happening? Well, what's happening is that the first time we obviously also need to go through this logic. So this one can be plugged in here as that is also the logic that it needs to execute. We then hit compile and save. Try it again. So the first time we get a little mouse and we can then already focus on the uh, on the widget here so i can immediately start pressing these buttons if i press t again the mouse gets hidden and my input focus goes directly back to the game press t again get my mouse can click things press t again and it's gone so that's a proper way to set this up now since we are in the player controller core class here uh, and this will be made uh, more often so we will be making more widgets on the screen then we can start to make these uh, this logic into functions basically so first of all this would be a nice function for us to be able to reuse so we're going to right click it collapse it to function and we'll give it a proper name something like uh, show underscore mouse slash focus widget so so that might be a bit of a long name so let's actually just call it focus widget in short and then we will know what this logic here does now that it's made into a function we can basically snippet it like this and then this one over here is going to be reused a lot as well so let's call this one focus game so now we got nice functions that each do their own functionality. Then I recommend putting these functions inside of a category. So let's call this uh, widget, widgets actually, because it is related to the widgets. So this one here, let's also put it inside of the widgets folder. And there we go. Now this is a bit of a big event. So we're gonna also select the entire event, hit collapse, and then we're gonna call this toggle underscore game menu as that is what it does. So now that we have a nice little graph again, we can then put this straight and there we go. If we put a comment around it, we can then type in what the functionality here is. So toggle game menu. All right, with that out of the way, we can then go back to our widgets folder where we can then continue coding the actual functionality of being able to leave the session. So first of all, we wanna code the quit game button quickly. So off of here, we're gonna drag and type in quit game. There we go. Then for the continue button, we basically want to call the same event as when we do toggle game menu, because this logic already handles whether or not we want to show or hide, etc. So in the case that we have the, the, the widget basically visible in our screen, then that means that the, well, first of all, it would be valid in that case, it would be visible in that case, so then it would collapse it and focus the game. So that's basically what we want to do here. Uh, and then we could also make just a separate function. So if we would put this into a function, then you could also say that you uh, input the target of the widget that you want to hide inside of here. But an uh, easier way to do it would just be to call this function that exists inside of our player controller. So to do that, we're going to go here. Then we're going to type in get owning player. Uh, now the owning player of this widget, we set that up whenever we created it. So the owning player was ourself as the player controller. Check out Cactal Center right now, Steam and Early Access. It's a very fun multiplayer video game, cheaper than a Starbucks coffee. So if you want to have a good time with your friends or strangers, click that link down below. And I appreciate every single one of you and enjoy the rest of the video. Bye. So now that we got the owning player here, we can then drag off of it and type in cast to PC core. So this cast will basically now get all the information about the PC core. And then what we want to do on the PC core comes out of here. And that is basically uh, going to be this function over here called toggle game menu. So we're going to drag off here, type in toggle game menu. And there we go. Now we can uh, give this logic so far a little test. So if we hit play, then I can click on T and I click on continue, which focuses the game again. And there we go. 
and I can click on T and quit game to quit the game. Now the last one that we need is to leave the game. So now we're going to be focusing on that again. Um, to leave the game, we basically, first of all, need to have an event that basically makes us leave the game. So uh, we're gonna open up our game instance again, and this is where we will be coding that event. So the event will be a custom event, and we're gonna call this event leave session. And then what the event does in the case that we wish to leave a session as a player. So let's say we are in this level or any other type of level. Whenever we leave a session, we want to return back to the main menu level. So we're going to double click this main menu level and copy paste its name. And that's basically what we want to do. But then as explained in the previous video, we're also going to need to destroy the session. So in the case that I am the host of the session, we also want to make sure that that session that I created is destroyed. Now, why do we need to make sure that that gets destroyed? If we do not destroy it, it will basically still exist and we will just have teleported to the main menu level. And in that case, if I am then in the main menu and I wish to create another session, then I will get an error. I will specifically then get a networking error telling us that we are still in a session so that it cannot create a new session for us. So uh, back inside of the game instance here, we're going to type in open level by name. So it's going to be this one. And the level that we want to open in the case that we leave a session is the main menu level. And after going to the main menu level, we then want to call the destroy session node and then it's asking us for a player controller well since the game instance is basically only related to your local game we can simply drag off of here and type in get player controller and there we go so that's how we can properly leave the session but now obviously from this widget where we click on the leave game button we're going to have to communicate to this event so one easy way to do that is that inside of the game menu here we could simply type in get game instance and then if we have the game instance, we can simply cast to our game instance and call the function there. Or we could make a very nice little function library, which we're going to need to use anyways later on in this video series. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. Uh, and what is a function library? Well, as we just saw, we can already start to make functions that are reusable inside of classes. So here in the classes, we got these functions right now. And this toggle game function, we're also going to be putting it inside of the widgets category. But uh, these functions are just now uh, basically installed inside of the core player controller. So if I wanted to reuse these functions, then my only option is to right click this class and to make a child class. So if this would be a child of this player controller, so player controller core child, then I could open this up and it would have all of the shared functionality that exists here. So for instance, when we now click on the functions over here, then we will see those functions for focusing the game, focusing the widget and toggling the game menu that exists inside of our PC core. So we can now actually call these functions and then start to code here as well and basically reuse them. But uh, instead of doing that, what we're going to be doing is another way to also reuse functions. And that is what we call a function library. So we're going to make a new folder here and call it function library. And then we're going to open this folder up, right click, go to blueprints. And then over here, we see blueprint function library. We're going to then click it and call this BP underscore, um, let's call it uh, FL. So function library, if we hit save, then we can open it up. And then what is a function library? Well, so any function that you write in here can be reused in any class inside of Unreal Engine. So if we were to code functions here, we can then literally use them inside of this player controller, inside of the game instance, even inside of the widget, basically anywhere. So the first function that we wanna make here, let's call that one leave session. And then we're going to be putting it inside of a category called session, sessions, actually. So now if we hit compile and save, then if we go ahead and go over to our game menu, then we can now literally right click and type in leave session. And that gives us this beautiful little function. So we're going to hook this up here. And then if we double click it, it takes us to our function library, where here we will then type in get game instance. And then off of the game instance, we're gonna drag and cast to 
our uh, BPGI, which is our game instance. And then on the game instance, we want to call that event called leave session. So that will be this event. And then if we double click this event, we see it takes us here. So this event inside of the game session is responsible for actually leaving. And we're going to call it leave session and put it up a little bit. So what do we do now? If in the game menu here, we click leave session, we call the little function library event. That one handles the cast so that we do not need to do the cast in every single widget where we would be using this type of stuff. And this one then actually calls it here inside of the game instance. Now, another, uh, another place that we also need to install the destroy session node is over here next to these networking errors. So when a networking error occurs, we basically also want to ensure that we destroy the session that we had created. Otherwise, we're going to have the same story where in the main menu, we're going to try to click create and then it won't do the actual creation for us. So if we hit compile and save, and then here as well. Then we can now go ahead and close up all of these classes and we can have a look at what we have achieved and coded. So if we go back to our uh, main menu level here, then we want to click two players standalone and hit play. Then we get our two windows. We're going to rescale them a little bit. So let's make this one this size and the left one can be like this. All right, then we're going to have our right window here creating a session for 10 players and hit create. That one is now inside of the session. The left one is going to hit find, refresh. It's going to take a while to find the session. There we go. So one out of 10 players, we're then going to hit join. And that connects us to the session. Now, in the case that the server here on the right wants to leave, then the server will basically get destroyed. And then the left one here will be forced to leave the session as well. So in that case, the left one will get that game instance uh, networking error. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and test that to see that that networking error will actually pop up in the top left corner of this, uh, of this left guy window. So on the right here, we're going to click T to get this menu. And then we're going to click on leave session. So now we see that client one here says connection lost, failure received. And then we see that the client, as I explained earlier in the video, got back to the boot screen from the boot screen back into the main menu. And there we go. So now that we're back in the main menu, we basically see that we correctly handled the networking errors. We're then going to try it again. So we're going to click create 10 people create the session. We do not get an error because we properly destroyed the session. So we can instantly create a new one. We're then going to go to the left window here, click on find game, refresh. And then after a little while, the session pops up, we're going to click join. This one connects and we're both in the session. I can now then here also click on T, click on continue, and I can click on leave session to go back to the main menu. And then we see that that client that was inside of my session was properly removed and I'm still here. Now, if I want to rejoin again, I can say, simply click on find game, refresh. There's the session again. I can then hit join again and I'm back inside of his session. So there we go, guys. Now the loop is round. Now we have the ability to create sessions, find sessions, join sessions, and destroy sessions. We also learned about the function library, how that can be useful. We set up the game instance to properly handle the network errors and traveling errors. Um, so yeah, in the next video, we're going to continue with actually starting to coding some, uh, some gameplay functionality. So, uh, I'm not sure exactly what we'll be doing, but we're going to be looking at things such as health. Perhaps we want to add like a chat or the ability for players to be able to pick up weapons and start shooting each other because this is going to, of course, become a battle royale. So if you like this series, then please give it a like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to check it out on Patreon where you can download the project files for this series and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.